Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space and my cards for this week's color throwdown challenge, which I pulled out another oldie but goodie favorite of mine, the etched layered daisy stem die set. Another one that I have a playlist for, which I will link to at the end of the video because I have done multiple cards and videos using this die set in various ways because I love it. In fact, I love it so much. I purchased when Simon had a sale, I think, or something. I purchased a second uh, one of these so that I have two sets of die cuts to make it easier because, you know, if it's one that I use so much and it'll save me a bit of time, that's what I'll do. So I pulled out that and in fact, everything I used to make these cards are just like oldie but goodie products. And like always, with the Color Throwdown Challenge, it is just a weekly challenge. It's open to everyone. It's just for fun. I always link to it in the description box below the video. It's linked in the blog post. So hop on over to the blog post. I'll link to the, the challenge. I'll have uh, pictures, picture links, etc. And then, as always, I will also have um, my supply list and links to all the supplies I used. Also in the description box below. Also in the blog post everywhere make it as easy to find as possible and with supply lists uh for me their affiliate links all that means is that if you use my links if you click on any of them and then you place an order i get a tiny kickback at no additional cost to you and that adds up and helps pay the bills and keep the lights on and all the things so that's all i gotta say so keep watching and i'll show you guys how i made today's cards so to start off with, I took some Distress watercolor paper and the Simon Says Stamp Detail Ringlet Plate. And this came out years ago. Years ago. I don't even remember. It's been three or four years, I think. And I'm just taping the Distress watercolor paper onto like this wafer die. Because the wafer die is A2 sized, so is this piece of watercolor paper. And so I just used the the... Craft, per craft perfect die tape so that nothing you know moves and then all this wafer die does is pierce that pattern and I've been talking about this well off and on for years I like wafer dies like this like look at it you know just that texture and I've used you know similar ones in all from all sorts of brands over the years in just different ways but right now my current little obsession <laughs> is using it on watercolor paper and then doing like you know ink smushing and whatnot over it it's just one of those things you can 100% you know do some backgrounds in whatever way you want to do and then run them through with uh, any sort of patterned you know piercing die plate like this and that'll be great. I just, a lot of times I like to do the, the die cutting first because sometimes it'll kind of contribute to the, you know, the ink smushing, etc. because the inks have, you know, somewhere to kind of go, like seep in to those details, etc. But again, kind of do whatever, whatever works. You know, you're always going to get a different look no matter what you do. And speaking of different looks, um, Distress Oxide inks, on a glasswork surface. I've talked about this a lot. When you're ink smushing, surface matters. If you want that, you know, beaded texture, you know, really splotchy look, you want to work on something like a craft mat that, you know, the inks will beat up on because um, that's where you'll really get your texture. However, if you work on glass, which I'm doing now, it you saw when I sprayed the water, the inks immediately pool. They don't bead on glass. That's what I was going for this time. Because again, just random, random reasons, random thoughts. Um, I've been liking kind of mucking around this way. And it just, it just, again, it gives it a different look. Because I'm not trying to build a ton of texture. I just kind of want the color, a little bit of texture here and there. Because I've already got the detail with the, the piercing plate. And also it's on, it's just fun to experiment. Really, really, it's just fun. So the two colors I use was Stormy Sky and Faded Jeans Oxide Inks. And that's the, and I've said this before. This is why I love the color throwdown challenge because so often it's you know a color combo I wouldn't you know normally go for, and colors it gets me using colors I don't normally reach for. Like I don't often reach for stormy sky and faded jeans, and yet they're go they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. I love them. I just don't reach for them very often. So I was like, oh, perfect, love it. 
<laughs> so I just did some ink smushing, you know, created a bit of texture. And on, like, I really like, I really like how these colors looked together and just, yeah, these backgrounds were fun. So then I am going to add a bit of splatter, but same thing. It's going to go on like when I, you know, I just mush the same ink pads on my work surface, stuck these in my splat box just to keep, you know, splatter from getting everywhere. It looks quite dark at the moment, but this will just kind of dry back to the same, you know, depth as what's already on these backgrounds. So this is just going to add that little extra something, something. So I just swirled a brush into it and just splattered these backgrounds, like pretty simple. So went around, did all of that. And then I will actually revisit these and add brown to this as well. I just, I was still kind of mulling in my head what all I was, what all I was doing to make these cards. So for now, we're just going to let this dry. And then I die cut um, Simon's Smooth White cardstock using that um, etched layered daisy stem die set. And then to color these in, I'm using my Olo markers. I've been enjoying these. Um, hopefully I'll remember, I'll link to the little playlist I've started um, with the videos I've done so far using these. I've only got a few because I've only had these markers for a month, something, not very long. You can totally use like Copic markers. You can use tri-blend markers. You can use water-based markers. What, you know, you can ink blend. I've shown a bajillion different ways to color die cuts. Um, whatever works. I'm, I'm enjoying the Copics or the Olo markers. Um, mine, I'm using them. I call them little stublets. <laughs> I, I still have not connected mine because you do, you can connect them, you know, so it's an actual full size, normal size mar marker. I just use them like this and I'm fine with this for now until I decide what I'm going to do. But for now, I'm just content having them like this. It just works. So I colored the stems first and then cleaned up the, all the marker ink that I got on my work surface. I just used um, some little hand sanitizer for that, cleans it right up. And then for the actual uh, petals, I went in with some warm grays. Just gives it some shading and depth. Plus it's bringing in the gray color because that's part of this um, challenge this time. So I started off with that, like just towards like the base of the petals. And honestly, I was, I meant to have it a little more subtle, like not as much, but I'm heavy handed. <laughs> I'm still happy with how these turned out. I just, it was funny because I was like, they were supposed to look more like white daisies, <laughs> you know, with just a hint of shading and said they're more like kind of gray daisies, but you know what? I'm fine with it. it. They still have some definition and depth to them and I just, I went with it. So I used, um, you know, a couple of darker shades of warm gray and then I went in with this WG0, so almost, you know, colorless to blend it out some more. And then I'll go in with the actual zero uh, marker. And that just helps kind of press everything a little deeper because this cardstock is heavyweight. This is 120 pound um, cardstock that I'm using. So this just kind of presses it in a little deeper, blends it just a little bit more. And then um, after I do that, I'm going to color the flower centers. And for that, I'm going to use browns. And I just go around uh, with my darkest shade first. And you're only going to see the the ones with the detail because the, they're going to get layered on top of these ones that don't have detail. However, I still went around just kind of the perimeter and then also along just the edges because I'm coloring these centers with such a dark brown marker. I wanted to kind of just cover that exposed white edge of this watercolor or of this cardstock so that it doesn't show up, um, you know, just as, as stark when I layer everything together. So I, that's all I did for those bottom layers. It's just right around the edge because it doesn't need to be blended. It's going to get adhered on top of it. There's no point. And then for the actual flower centers that you see, I went in with two other shades to, you know, blend it out, give a definition. And then same thing. Use the, the brown marker just to go around those little bits of edges just to coat that exposed white edge just to clean it up a little bit. I don't always do stuff like this, but sometimes when it's just glaringly obvious because the color contrast, like really, really dark, dark brown versus white cardstock was obvious. So I took those few extra seconds just to do that and then we're good to go. So then all I had to do was layer them together. I did several more off camera. Like when I did these, I was like, oh, I'm good to go. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm doing two cards. 
<laughs> I was like, where's all the rest of them? <laughs> so I just did those off camera because same thing, you know, and I did a couple extra while I was at it because I was like, why not? I've got two die sets. This doesn't take like any extra time to die cut. And I did a couple extras that I'll put on the inside of the card, which I'll show a little later. So now I'm coming back to those backgrounds and I'm going to add some vintage photo and ground espresso distress oxide ink and same thing, just smushed them onto my work service, added a little bit of water and then press these backgrounds into it. Just not as much. You know, I wanted, you know, the brown splotchy bits, but I'm not completely covering these backgrounds because I want all, you know, that blue to show, of course. And then same thing. I just swirled my brush in there, added a little bit of splatters, you know, just kind of kind of grunging it up. Just just a just a smidge. I love the look of grunge, you know, when Tim Holtz does his grunge, I am here for it. I love it. It's not my forte, but it is fun. When you start doing it, it, it gets a little addicting, you know, like start adding brown to things. And it's like, oh, this is, this is fun. Like make it messy on purpose. <laughs> so these are now dry. I've shown this before in videos. I just use my mink machine. Honestly, this is what I use my mink machine for most of the time um, to flatten these. The paper has no memory. You can kind of bend them back a little bit. Stick them under books. If you've got the time, you know, you're working compartmentally, yada, yada, you can set them aside, stick them under something heavy, come back to it the next day or next week, whatever. Works great. I don't have the time or the patience, so I just run it through my ink machine and the heat and the rollers flatten it right out. The only thing you have to remember is you cannot do this if you've done any like heat embossing on your background or put any any sort of like adhesive, you know, anything that's going to like melt or react with heat, you do not want to run it through here because, you know, the heat going to remelt so if i'd like heat embossed a background or something it would remelt the embossed powder and then the rollers and then it would just press it smear it destroy it so if it's just paper and some ink works i just put it in the parchment paper run it through and it flattens out these backgrounds other time if i'm don't care um just adhering it to my card base flattens them as well but it's just a little easier to work on, you know, when I'm not having to fight with it and it's not, you know, it's no longer wonky. So after I'd flattened them, I trimmed them down just a little bit, just to slightly smaller than an A2 card size. So I think I trimmed it like four, four by five and a quarter. And then I pulled out um, Faded Jeans Distress Ink because this is a little, you know, a little darker than the oxide. And I just used a blending foam and just added that to the edges Again, just to give it that little extra something, I was going to do brown. I was like, oh, I'm going to really, you know, embrace the grunge. And then I was like, the blue one out. <laughs> brown would have looked really nice. It would have. But I just, I'm, faded jeans is a really pretty color. I need to use it more often. I think I used it in a more recent video. Um, but yeah, for whatever reason, I don't normally reach for blue, even though I love it. So again, kudos to the color throwdown challenge. I love it. So anywho, the other oldie but goodie is the um, handwritten hello wafer die set. And I die cut that from more just scraps of white cardstock. And for the like main part of the sentiment, I stacked just two layers together with my craft tacky glue. And then before I adhere anything else, I'm going to add color to these because I didn't want to leave them white. I'm going to use those same two browns. So vintage photo first, and then I'll go in with ground espresso. And I'm just using one of my little picket fence um, pint sized paper pouncers to add the ink to this, especially when it's a somewhat delicate sentiment. This one isn't super, super delicate. You know, some of the really fine scripty ones can be, but pouncing ink versus using a brush just so much easier you know I don't have to worry so much about you know bending things or ripping the cardstock or anything like that so I added that brown ink to those die cuts and then I'm going to adhere these to the outline which I die cut from vellum and then once the sentiment is adhered to the outline the final piece of the sentiment the the last layer I'm adhering behind it because that will get make it a little bit easier to adhere the sentiment on top of when I'm like done assembling you know the elements on the card because adhesive shows through vellum so sticking this behind the vellum it just gives me somewhere um to put the adhesive, I've shown in other videos in the past, like just tracing behind the sentiment with my adhesive, that it works. You just have to be a little more careful and this is this is faster. Plus it does pop up the vellum that tiny little bit so it floats just a bit and it gives that little extra something. So I did all that with my sentiments, set them aside, 
And then to adhere my daisies to these card fronts, I use just some thin foam squares just right behind the flower center. And then I just put a thin line of glue down the stems and then just kind of made a cluster here onto um, my, my inky, smushy, uh, detail ringlet plate backgrounds. And then after I got the, the daisies, you know, where I wanted them, just kind of tucked them in together there into a little cluster. I'm going to add, of course, Baker's Twine, of course. Again, those that have been, you know, watching my, however long it's been now, <laughs> the Baker's Twine, you know, when it, when it made its uh, appearance again. And I started using, because I have a lot of Baker's Twine in my stash. I love it. I love it. It just gives a little extra something. So wrap that around the card front. Reverse tweezers for the win, as always, because you start the knot, and then I just use the reverse tweezers to hold it in place. Fiddle with my 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 bow till I get it the way I want it. Zhuzh it a little bit, and then trim off the excess with uh, my scissors, and then apply the adhesive to the the little cardstock die cut on the back of the sentiment, and then um, I'm gonna stick that right into place, right over the um, stems of these little daisies. You just kind of tuck it right under that. Uh, baker's twine and then for my card bases this is some I think it's charcoal cardstock from hero arts yeah and rather than do like a liner a lot of times with darker cardstocks I'll put like a liner on the inside so like light cardstock or white cardstock on the inside of my card but this time I decided to just leave it as is just because I can write with a gel pen it'll be legible it'll be fine and I'm stamping a sentiment from another one that I use a lot the XL greetings 3 stamp set this sentiment I've used like a bajillion times and I inked it up and stamped it a couple times with stormy sky and then since it was in my misty I inked it up with that faded jeans oxide ink and stamped it on top so the stormy sky just kind of gave it a base so that the faded jeans would show up a bit better another way to make this work is if you're stamping on like darker cardstock or it's like a lighter oxide ink etc is to stamp your sentiment or your image or whatever you're stamping with white pigment ink and then stamp whatever it is with whatever color um oxides work best you can try it with dye inks sometimes it'll work too and you stamp that right on top so this shows up quite nicely it's subtle but i like it so i adhered that those daisies that i had done um off camera adhered those to the insides of the cards after i'd stamped the sentiments and then trimmed off the excess and then on the backs of my uh card fronts i put simon's big mama foam tape That'll give it a little bit of lift and dimension, plus make these adhere nice with um, the bulk of the, the baker's twine, which isn't that bulky, but it's there. So put the, the big mama foam tape on the back, peeled off the backing, stuck this onto my uh, card bases. And then as my final little bit of embellishment, I have some Trinity Stamps silver satin baubles and just kind of place those around my little florals and once I was happy with where they were adhered them into place with dabs of craft tacky glue and I had completely forgotten till I finished like basically finished the video I was like oh yeah the stems are sticking out past the bottom like this won't fit in an envelope <laughs> so I'll trim those off in a second I also took a white gel pen added just little highlights just to the flower centers a couple little highlights couple little little dots here and there just as a final little little thing yeah it, that's that's what it is it's a thing so i <laughs> added those then remembered to trim off the little stems hanging off the bottoms of the card fronts and these cards were complete so like i said in the intro i will have a link to my playlist using these um etched daisy wafer dies i'll also have a link to the playlist using olo markers and then in the description box below i'll have the link to my blog post that'll have the color challenge etc i'll have the supply list all that info will be in the description box below for anyone who is interested and as always thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos for thumbs upping commenting letting the robot overlords know you guys like what you see subscribe if you haven't i would love to have you and i will see you all very soon in the next video bye <laughs>